Hi guys, welcome to part two of my Her Starts Dungeon Tiles uh, how-to video. Here are the pieces I made up uh, once they've been primed. I used a Beauty Tone black alkaline enamel uh, spray paint to, uh, to prime these. And uh, because I've got some cornering and um, the fieldstone wall pieces, I did my best to get some good coverage. But still, um, I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up all that well, but the underside of some of these stones are still showing um, a bit of white, even though I sprayed them from above and then I actually flipped them over and gave them a little spray from, from this direction. They're still showing a little bit of white, not terribly noticeable, and I'm not sure how much touch-up I'm going to have to do. It's visible on a couple of other pieces more than, um, more than some. I've also taken the uh, pieces that Ben from Ben's RPG pile uh, sent me and primed those as well. And I'm going to use some of these uh, in, in the future and um, to um, accessorize my, my current pieces. And because these are, um, you know, they're detailed and they're fairly intricate little um, castings, uh, I still have a little bit of white showing through on the underside of some of these. And I can see now in the camera that it looks whiter than it is. It's just a little bit of uh, area that didn't quite get covered. So I'm going to go back over and, and touch up some of these. Um, but I did, a, I did a pretty good job of, of coating the, uh, the entranceway. And there's some glare coming in from the window. But uh, the underside and the sides of the grate here are fairly well covered. And... Um, I've, I'm going to use this miniature to act as the the statue piece I'm going to make. So this is going to be a, a pedestal statue. Oops. Sort of like that. And I'm going to go back and prime this guy as well before I before I glue him on there and uh, dry brush him to uh, to make it appear so that. It's another snowy day here in Nova Scotia. One last uh, blast of winter before uh, we finally get to uh, some spring weather. It's a bit of a snow day today. And uh, so I'm just going to show you the other pieces that I primed up. Again, these are all the pieces that Ben from Ben's RPG Pile uh, was kind enough to trade with me for um, some glue that he uh, wasn't able to get south of the border. And um, you might have seen that in another video of mine that I posted. But these have been primed and are ready to go. And some of these um, pillars pillars and statues um, are going to be used to accent some of the pieces um, that I've made up for the dungeon tiles. I think there are a couple of uh, column pieces that will go well. Um, let's see. Somewhere in here there's a... Uh, broken column. Maybe I can accent my entranceway with uh, one of these little um, relief animal uh, heads or some of these little tiny uh, gargoyle uh, figurines can be used. Yeah, here's, here's a piece. Here's a uh, piece of broken column that can be used to accent the, the piece. Okay, so uh, next step is to break out the uh, the paints and to do some dry brushing and uh, to see what these. In this part of the video I'm going to go over uh, my technique for dry brushing. I've got several pieces done already, uh, just the, the first coat and I use three different coats during the dry brushing process. And I've got um, raw umber, just a standard gray and a standard white and I apply two coats to the floor sections, um, the gray and the and the brown, and then uh, just on the walls, um, a light coating of the white to make them stand out. And the object is to have the pieces turn out something like that. I'm trying to match up the first batch I did uh, from a while ago, just because I don't have a lot of uh, the terrain yet. So I'm trying to uh, have things um, look the same so they can be used together and with the cracked earth floor tiles you can see that there's a good amount of texture on there 
You can see the, the grooves and the ripples in the, in the tiles and how the dry brushing makes the, um, makes the color stand out. And then the walls are, are touched up with the white um, to make them contrast the flooring. I'm not doing a very good job of putting it in the center. There we go. And I'm here with Sarah, and she's doing some painting of her own. She's painting some of the accessories that uh, Ben from Ben's RPG pile sent over. And it's not going very well. <laughs> so far, you're looking at uh, some of the tree stumps and fungus pieces and a couple of the barrels and crates and doors. And I'm working on a bed. And the bed. So, um, I use an overturned plate. All the, all the paints are acrylic, so uh, the paint will just wash off um, uh, once I'm finished. And um, just an old dollar store brush. This one says half. I'm not sure exactly what size that means. And um, this is a piece, um, it's a four by three with a, with a wall section. And basically I just get a little bit of paint on the brush and rub it off on a piece of paper towel so that most of the paint is off and then I because right now the, 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 there's as much paint on the brush as, as I'm going to have so I, I will lightly dab until I get most of that stuff off and then with a fairly quick back and forth stroke I will apply that coat of paint and the idea is to have it just touch up along the grooves and over the surface texture of the tile and to be even as possible. And the look I'm going for by using the brown on, um, underneath the gray, the look I got last time, which I was happy with, was sort of like a, a slate colored bit of terrain. And that worked out pretty well or it looked pretty good. And so I just fairly vigorously give the piece a once over and I do the same thing to the walls. There. Next will be the, the second coat. Okay, so the next coat to go on is the gray and like the brown, you want to apply an even coat that sort of just picks up the accents of the piece and um, as each coat goes on you want uh, less and less paint. So this is the one I showed you from before and with just a little bit of gray on the brush again you just want to lightly go over the piece, spotlighting the, the highlights in fact, you could use a little more. And I'll go in multiple directions to try and um, prevent brush strokes from appearing on the piece as well. And um, let's see, a good angle for you to be able to tell. See there that the, the gray is really picked up. And we do the same thing. The wall is going to get the, uh, the last coating of white as well, which you will see coming up. Okay, so the final step then to dry brushing is applying uh, the white uh, coat to just the walls and because this uh, stands out quite a bit, here's a piece I've already done, because this um, white coat stands out quite a bit, you want just the barest minimum of uh, white paint on your brush. And so make your brush almost entirely dry and to keep the white paint off of the floor tiles I use just a piece of cardstock and I hold it in here like this and, and use that to, um, to apply the paint. And again the technique is the same, just a light touching. This time you're just going to be touching the tops of the stones. Okay. 
And then when your area next to the floor is done, you can just take the piece and apply it. Apply the paint normally. And this gives a good contrast between the walls and the floors. There was one other thing I wanted to mention before I went on to uh, applying the flock, and that is uh, putting the tiles side by side like this. You can sort of see if there's any difference in how they how they blend, or if you've got um, some areas that are um, painted more than others. And I'm not sure if you're able to tell, but I can by looking at these two pieces, for example, that uh, this piece doesn't have as much of the white as as this one does. So what I can do is just take this piece. And because it's near the end, I guess I didn't quite apply the same amount as I, as I did on the others. I can come back and give this one just a little bit more of the white on the walls. And that will help it um, blend and, and uh, make for a more seamless transition from one tile to the next. Okay. Okay, so now that you've got your piece, uh, painted like you want and dry brushed I'm gonna try it and add some flock uh, this particular piece I made with a little gap here in the in the wall that can be used to represent a culvert or something or a drain and in a corner of a piece of uh, piece of dungeon or, or a part of a dungeon so I thought it would be neat to add some flocking uh, in and around this uh, culvert to represent that the area is, is damp um, a lot of the time and some, some mold or what have you has, has grown there. So I, I've taken a plate just to lay out and um, just to help uh, with, the, with the mess of sprinkling the flock on. And taking some recommendations again from, from guys that have been doing it uh, a lot longer than I have. Um, I've got this dropper bottle that's uh, got a, a needle tip on it and it's, uh, it's got a mixture or a watered down mixture of glue. It's uh, basically a 50-50 um, mix of standard white uh, every uh, multi-purpose glue and some water. And so for the area that I want to uh, cover I will uh, dribble some of the watered down glue mixture in there, and I've got the piece laid on its side because obviously I'm looking at a, a vertical surface here. So, um, so I want it to set on its side like that before I do anything up and around the top or on the floor. And because the glue is still a little, um, you know, it tends to uh, bubble or uh, pool. I'll take a toothpick and then sort of coax the um, the liquid glue into the crevices that I want covered. something like that. And I'm using uh, Woodland Scenics uh, Fine Turf Green Grass for the flocking. And I'm basically just going to take a couple of pinches and sprinkle it on top of the glue. I'm going to let that set for a few minutes. Okay, so it's been a couple minutes. So basically now I will uh, take the excess and knock it off and because I'm going for a, um, a look that's supposed to be moss, got a little bit of glue seeping through the stone there, because I'm going for a look that's supposed to be moss um, what I'm going to do is apply a second layer of glue and apply more flocking um, because I want to push the, with a toothpick, I want to push the moss, the flocking down into the grooves of the, of the stone to make it a little denser. And this way I can actually clear off the surfaces of the, clear off the surfaces of the stones. So I'm just going to apply a second layer, same as before, and then with my toothpick I'm going to sort of push the 
push the flocking uh, down into the grooves of the stone. Okay, we'll let that set. We'll come back in a little bit. Okay, so I've gone ahead now and added the flocking to the cracks along the, uh, the floor tile as well and along the top of the piece. So I think that's turned out pretty good. Let's see if that stays and comes into focus. And I've also added a little bit of rubble sand using um, Woodland Scenics ballast, uh, coarse gray to um, a piece that's got a couple of rubble pieces of fieldstone wall attached. I think though that what I'll wind up doing is going over um, this piece once it totally dries with a little bit of dry brushing in grey just to help blend the colors in a little bit because I think the um, I think it stands out a little bit too much but I like the look. So this is the results then after the latest uh, batch of tiles that I've made up. I've got enough now for this uh, good size room. Plus I'm starting to get uh, some of the accessories that uh, Ben from Ben's RPG pile uh, sent me painted up as well with some help from Sarah. And I've got a few, a uh, couple of stone sarcophagus there that I'm going to be treating with a, another dry brushing in grey just to make them stand out a little bit because they tend to uh, be dark and blend in with the uh, with the surrounding floors. Here's the the flocked up bit of uh, culvert there and it looks pretty good and here's some more sand rubble that I've I've added I'm going to be dry brushing a little bit more and some more green moss uh, flocking on that piece over there this is the entrance way that I've been I, I've been working on and I'm going to treat it with another round of dry brushing as well I've got a couple of gargoyles there um, on either side and the paint is still wet, but I've got a couple of wall sconces here that I've got some of that ballast uh, sitting in so that when it dries, it'll hopefully look like uh, burnt out embers or pieces of um, charcoal that have burnt out. So that turned out pretty good. And in the room now, we've got a, perhaps an encounter between some um, dungeon delvers and maybe members of uh, an evil brotherhood protecting the, the stone sarcophagi, who knows. And um, I've already moved on to my next batch of tiles. I've got some, uh, some wall pieces in, in various sizes uh, and a set of stairs, um, a four-way intersection, um, a five-foot wide uh, four-way intersection there. And there we go. Please give your uh, comments, your feedback, Oh, one more thing. I'm going to be uh, finishing these pieces or, or, or um, coating them um, to seal them with a clear coat. What I have is the tester's spray lacquer and it's supposed to be the dull coat, which is a flat finish. I'm going to do a test on one piece before I um, move on to the others in case this isn't quite giving me the look I was uh, going for. Um, there's also the um, a Krylon um, matte finish that's um, going to be what I'll go to if this doesn't work out very well. Um, but anyway, uh, give your comments and your feedback, and um, we'll see you soon. Thanks.